Hey everyone, thanks for joining us uh, over your lunch hour. For a lot of you, we appreciate the time. Uh, we're gonna have 30 minutes together, so I'm gonna jump into things. Uh, I've been here at Tier One since 2007 and have almost 20 years of sales experience. I'm the Executive Vice President here and I head up the sales team. Gary? Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, I'm Gary Pabalarsek. I'm the director of EPM Services. Uh, I've been working with uh, EPM Hyperion for about 20 years, a uh, broad range of uh, implementations, upgrades, patches, and so forth. Okay. Uh, as for our agenda today, I'm going to take a few quick minutes and go over Tier 1, who we are and what we do. I'm uh, going to review some of the uh, questions that you all were kind enough to submit prior to the webinar. And then at the end, we'll have a Q&A session as time permits to address any additional questions that come in. So as for the quick overview of Tier 1, um, some of you on the phone know who we are and have worked with us in the past. So it's nice to see your, uh, your faces, so to speak, on the webinar. Uh, Tier 1 is based in Pittsburgh. We have been in business since 2003. And we focus exclusively on Oracle. That is all we do, um, mainly uh, EPM, eBusiness Suite, as well as the database and Oracle Cloud EPM and ERP products. Um, we provide full lifecycle solutions around all of these products. And by that, I mean we can provide 24 by 7 managed services for technical and functional support of your EPM, <clears throat> excuse me, EPM environment. Uh, we can provide implementations, whether it's um, cloud or on-prem. We can upgrade, which is the topic of today's conversation, obviously. Uh, and then we can also host. So if there's ever an opportunity where you want to move your on-prem application to a private cloud, uh, Tier 1 can do that. We have our own private cloud uh, that is based on Oracle's PCA or the private cloud appliance. And uh, moving on. Um, this will be the last little slide I have on Tier 1, and then we can dive into the meat of the presentation. So just wanted to share with you, um, you know, why we've been successful. There's tons of other companies out there that do exactly what we do. If you've ever gone to one of the big, you know, Oracle trade shows, uh, Kaleidoscope or Collaborate or, or Open World, and, and you walk into the, uh, the vendor hall, uh, you, you're probably overwhelmed with the hundreds of booths and, and uh, all the activity that's going on. Um, but, you know, we think that we can really separate ourselves from um, all that um, external, external noise, so to speak. So if you follow me in the upper left-hand corner, I'll take you on a quick little journey on why we've been successful. So uh, we've been at this since 03. Uh, we're not too big. We're not too small. We're in, in a sweet spot um, where we have uh, approximately 60 employees that are uh, scattered across the U.S. Uh, and obviously a, a, a good amount here in Pittsburgh. Uh, both Gary and I are based in Pittsburgh. Um, we have um, built long-term relationships with our customers. Uh, we have some customers that have been supported by the exact same resources uh, from Tier 1 for you know, 10 plus years. So we really become a part of the, the support family and, and vice versa. And moving along, you know, we provide a very customized approach uh, to your solution. You know, we're a consulting company. We don't have a, a one-size-fits-all offering that we try to squeeze you into. You know, we're going to take the time to sit down with you over a conversation or two and really understand what you need from us. Um, you know, maybe, you know, yeah, you want to upgrade, but maybe you just need a, a part-time resource. Maybe you need the full, the full shebang. You need the infrastructure support. You need the technical support. You need the project management support. We're going to work with you to, um, to make a combination that is going to make sense for you. Um, you know, our senior executives are involved in every partnership that we have. Um, down the road, if you decide to work with Tier 1, you'll not only meet Gary, but you'll meet Craig Krause, who is uh, Tier 1 COO, uh, and possibly even our CEO, Rob, um, who is known to, to get out there on sales calls and, and shake customers' hands and actually sit in front of them and say to you, hey, you know, here's my cell phone number. I guarantee you that this project or this relationship is going to be successful. Um, you know, he, that's a very, it's a very rare thing in our industry for, for a CEO to take time out of his, uh, out of his day to do that. Um, but we have seen that time and time again, 
uh, with the executive staff here at Tier 1, and we're very, uh, very proud of that. And speaking of proud, um, probably one of the, the most, um, the most pride-bearing um, traits we have here is our employee retention. Over a third of our company has been here for more than 10 years, which is pretty phenomenal for any industry, but especially the IT and the consulting industry. And all four of these points kind of mesh together uh, to form um, our customer retention, um, which, has, which is in excess of 90% since we have founded the company. So uh, again, very proud of all of these, uh, all of these separate points that make up um, customers that, that don't want to go anywhere, and that's important on, on both of our ends. And that is all I have to say on Tier 1. Happy to answer any questions in the future here. Uh, but I'm going to kick this back over to Gary, and we can dive in to the meat of the, um, the presentation. And, and like I said, we asked everybody to submit questions um, prior to this presentation. And one of the, the most obvious and one of the most asked questions was, okay, you know, why do we have to do this? Why do we have to upgrade? Gary? All right. Thank you, Marcy. Appreciate that introduction. So yes, that's obviously the question on everybody's minds these days. Uh, why do we need to upgrade? Uh, what does that mean to us? So uh, the, the main reason why uh, most customers that are running EPM are upgrading is because Premier support is expiring at the end of this year. So if you're on 11.124 or a previous version, Premier support with Oracle support will be ending in December. And everybody asks, well, what is Premier support? Basically, Premier support is the ability to get patch updates and bug fixes for your version of the software. So if you are running 11.124 after December, you will be unable to get patch updates or bug fixes for that version. Uh, if you want to continue to receive patch updates, bug fixes, uh, upgrade ca uh, capabilities, then you're going to need to move to uh, version 11.2. Uh, one of the big things that this comes into play is uh, part of your uh, IT audits. Uh, Sarbanes-Oxley compliance uh, typically stipulates that you need to have an actively supported version of software. Uh, obviously, that's a, a financial risk uh, for any company. Uh, you don't want to be running on obsolete software and run the risk of a, a browser incompatibility or a Microsoft Office com uh, compatibility issue. Uh, so that's what uh, part of the audit process of Sarbanes-Oxley helps keep that compliant with a uh, support arrangement, right? And then the third piece of it is upgrading is uh, third-party software compatibility. Um, you want to make sure that whatever your browsers are that you're using, uh, whatever third-party software, whether it's a Java version, uh, whether it's an operating system, a database system, uh, that those versions are supported. Uh, with your version of the software. And so by upgrading to 11.2, you know that you're going to be supported on the latest operating system, whether it's Windows 10 for a client machine or Windows uh, Server 2016 or Microsoft SQL Server 2000 or 2019. All of those are part of that third-party compatibility uh, supported. Great, thanks, Gary. Okay. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about the support life cycle for 11.2? Sure, sure. So what happens with a lot of companies when they're upgrading? They, the, the next question they have after they get to the decision of, yes, we need to upgrade, how long is that support available? How long is the version that I'm going to going to be supported? I don't want to have to upgrade today and then upgrade again uh, in you know a, a year or two. I want to understand what that is. So in the version that you're moving to 11.2, Premier support is through 2031. And so for those of you that have gone through implementations and upgrade cycles uh, in, the, in the world of software, 2031 is, is a lifetime away. Uh, you know, that's 10 years from now. Many things can change by then. This is just uh, Oracle's forward-looking statement of direction. Uh, they could extend it. Uh, they could uh, move to cloud. There are a lot of different opportunities there that will go through there. But suffice it to say, um, if you go to 11.2, you will be supported uh, with that version through 2031. Uh, with that supported life cycle is also your Windows support. So uh, if you're running on older versions of Windows software, whether it be Windows 7 or you're running on servers that are older versions, this is that opportunity to get those servers up to compliance. I know Microsoft has de-supported a lot of older versions of their server, Windows 2003 and so, so on. Uh, this is a way to get everything up to uh, current compatibility levels. 
And then uh, also within your underlying database, uh, you're going to see support for Microsoft SQL Server uh, 2016 and I believe also uh, 2019. All right, great. Thanks for that breakdown. So talk to us a little bit more. You know, this is a, a brand new version, so I'm assuming it's faster, it's better, it's bigger, it's stronger. Can you give us uh, some breakdown there? Sure, sure. Yeah, well, why upgrade if it's not going to be better, right? I mean, outside of the normal tech uh, compatibility, we also want to make sure that we're getting something better in the end. And really, simply put, yes, it is better. It's faster, it is more stable, and definitely more secure. Where it's becoming faster and more and more stable is the uplift that you're moving into Fusion Middleware 12G. Uh, the previous versions, 11.1.2, were all supported on older versions of Fusion Middleware, uh, 11 and prior. And so now you're moving up to the latest and greatest Fusion Middleware 12G. That's going to make things a lot more um, stable from your uh, running, uh, running your services, running your servers, and just a lot more uh, secure, and, and you're gonna uh, benefit from speed increases as well. So uh, faster consolidations, um, you know, uh, be able to tune it specifically for your particular environment, right? Uh, in the upgrade to 11.2, uh, there have been some underlying framework improvements uh, within reporting. So previously, uh, you would have actual files that would exist within the file structure on the server that contained your individual Hyperion financial reports. That has been eliminated in 11.2. Now what happens is your report objects will exist in the underlying database. So if you've had an Oracle database underneath of your Hyperion environment or you have a SQL Server uh, environment, uh, that is where your reports will exist going forward. So it's a lot easier to manage. You don't have to worry about, well, is the, is the object in the database is it in a file system, everything's going to reside in the database. So it makes it a lot easier to manage backups, uh, retention, those types of things. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, when you install uh, the new version of 11.2, future updates will apply to all of the components you install. So previously, when you would uh, want to patch your environment, you would have to know which applications you were uh, looking at and you patch each one of those individually. So if you wanted to patch your S-Space, you may have to download an S-Space patch. If you wanted to uh, patch your reporting and analysis, you would have a different patch for that. And so there, all these different patches became very cumbersome to manage. Going forward, these updates will be applied across the board based on the uh, applications that you have installed. So if you have HFM, FDM, planning S-Bates, it's going to look, it's going to say, oh, I see these, I'm going to install all of the updates, all the patches all at once, and then that way you don't have to worry about patch compatibility, version compatibility, it all gets updated together. Much simpler, much easier process from the back-end infrastructure point to, to do that. All right, great, makes sense. Um, how about new functionality? So yeah, so there's definitely some new functionality uh, in the workspace and in SmartView. Uh, what you'll notice is that because of the reporting, like we said, the, re uh, the repository is going to be a lot uh, more simplified, so it's easier to manage and maintain your reports in your workspace, uh, pulling them through SmartView. Uh, the upgraded tech stack, we were talking a little bit about the Fusion middleware, that's going to make things a little quicker. You're going to see some better performance when you're doing retrievals in SmartView based on what you have right now, and if you're comparing apples to apples with 11.124. Uh, you're also going to have a migration tool, so it's going to be a lot easier to move your URL connection. So if you have SmartView and you want to make sure that all of those uh, hyperlinks are getting moved forward, there's a tool that Oracle provides that allow you, allows you to map that hyperlink to your new environments. Uh, there's also some new functions that are getting updated. Uh, if you do use VBA, some macros behind the scenes with SmartView and Excel, uh, updating the connections. Uh, as well as some authentication so that as you're logging in, you're authenticating, there's some improvements there to make authentication easier. And then just overall, it is a faster system in general. All right, great. So um, some of the questions that came through were specific to, you know, what are the new features in planning, HFM, and DRM? And I know you uh, took some time to bullet these out on, on separate slides. So why don't you go through those if you don't mind? Sure, sure. So with planning, one of the first things you'll see is that there's a technology called Smart Push. If you've ever used any of the EPM cloud or heard of them, what you'll see is that the cloud products no longer use what we call partitioning. Partitioning was something that was more of an on-prem situation where you could link data between cubes. Uh, what's coming to planning is that Smart Push capability. Uh, in our experience, it has, it's a faster and easier 
deployment as opposed to partitions. It's much easier to use that smart push technology and move it through. Uh, so that's coming to planning. It's gonna make it a lot easier to keep your data synchronized between your various applications. Um, there's also an improvement in the dimension editor. You're gonna be able to use smart view to maintain your dimensions. So if you're used to going into the GUI interface and adding dimensions one by one, um, you know, the things that maybe you would have to do where you'd upload a file and that would be all your dimension uh, members. This is gonna be a lot easier through SmartView, so you just kind of pull that through that SmartView uh, editor, okay? Uh, also extended uh, attribute support. So if you're using attribute dimensions in your application and uh, this has a much more extensive capability to do several more attributes uh, than what normally, I think there's a limitation, uh, there's a limitation on the number of attributes that has been extended. And then also the capability of valid intersections. So what you can do within planning uh, going forward is you'll be able to restrict uh, data combinations so that data does not get entered or uh, populated in certain intersections. So if you know that your sales accounts always have to have a product, you're gonna make sure that there's a product field required. If you know that expenses always have to have a corresponding department, then you're gonna create combinations with valid inter intersections like that. So then that way you don't have to worry about data getting populated in intersections that are not uh, correct. You know, you, you don't want a department in a sales uh, account, those types of things, okay? Uh, as far as HFM, uh, there's some uh, enhancements in the automated consolidation, so you can actually automate your consolidation process so you don't have to have users kick that off manually. Uh, there are some additional configurations uh, that are available for admins from the uh, front end, the graphic front end. So uh, you know, things like uh, being able to administrate how many consolidations can be kicked off simultaneously, resources, those types of things available on your server. You can manage those uh, as well, configured by the admin. Uh, an improved metadata editor. So if you're used to using the HFM uh, utility where you have to extract the metadata and um, change it in a different tool, this is gonna be a lot easier to manage and maintain your metadata going forward. Uh, it replaces the current metadata management. And uh, then you also have some ability to purge source tables after imports. So as you're moving things to keep the database small, consistent, moving fast, you have the ability to, to purge things um, you know, within those tables so that they're not being retained in perpetuity. Uh, overall, there are performance improvements in HFM. You're going to see consolidations run uh, faster than what you normally would see in your current environments. Um, and then there's also some smart view and some batch processing, uh, database batch processing that gets included as well with HFM. So in some of the new features that are coming to DRM, uh, Data Relationship Manager, and the reason why we talk about DRM is if you are using uh, EPMA, uh, Architecture uh, Management, to manage your dimensions, uh, shared dimension, dimension libraries, things like that, that is going away in the new version. So what Oracle is replacing EPMA with is DRM. And so as part of that, what they're doing is providing batch scripts that allows you to ease the replacement of EPMA to DRM. So basically you would have DRM that would be managing your metadata. Now the DRM instance is only available for EPM and has a specific licensing for it, uh, but that is the way of getting through your metadata management. So if you have multiple applications and you're trying to sync up your account structure across all these different applications, you would use DRM going forward. It's a far more robust pool than what we've had with EPMA in the past. Right. Uh, there's also a delay data relationship governance. So that allows you to kind of manage across uh, all of your applications, which uh, dimensions, which members are getting pushed. Uh, that's gonna be handled more from an, uh, an overall point of view. Okay, we're gonna push all these new departments to all the applications. We can do that very easily with the data relationship governance. Right. Uh, there's also a mass approval. So if we wanna just approve all, uh, you know, let's say we're adding a bunch of new entities, we can add them all at the same time and mass approve the entire ones instead of doing them one by one. You have that granularity though, if you wanna go through that, right? And uh, now in the new version of DRM, we also have SFTP uh, connection available. Uh, previously in versions of DRM, only FTP, which we know is not secured connection, uh, that has been, um, improved so that now you can use SFTP connections to move files from locations up to DRM and then that way you can manage your metadata through a more secure channel. All right, Gary, thank you. So I'm assuming with the new version, uh, there may be some, um, some applications and functionality that are depreciated. Yeah, so yeah, there's there's definitely uh, a lot of things that are uh, being deprecated as a process, as, uh, as, a, as an upgrade. You, you wanna kind of be aware of them, it's kind of a long list here. So I'll just kind of go through them briefly here. And um, you know, we, we won't talk too much about it other than to know that a lot of them are due, 
boutique products. So financial management, analytics, uh, a, uh, EAL uh, application link, if you use that, quantitative management, a lot of these are boutique products. Uh, BI, interactive reporting has actually been gone for quite a while. Productive re uh, production reporting is also being deprecated and web analysis. I don't think, think anybody's using that anymore. Uh, Hyperion planning, uh, strategic finance goes away. Crystal ball is being replaced. Uh, the simplified uh, interface. So if you ever just had that URL where it just went right to the planning application, uh, that's being deprecated. You're going through the workspace now when you do that. And then if you have any of these applications going forward, now it doesn't mean you can't use workforce, capital expense or project. It just means that there are not modules specific in 11.2. So if you have an 11.124, you can still migrate them forward. Uh, you just would not need to worry about having licensing for them going forward uh, because there is no module specifically uh, for those going forward. Okay. And then there's some other things. So we talked a little bit about EPMA Architect. Uh, you'll be using that going forward, your disclosure management and EPM Mobile. So if any of you were using tablets or phones and you were using that for uh, process uh, approval, that's been deprecated as well. Okay. Great, very good. So a couple more questions that had come in uh, previously to our webinar. Um, is the upgrade in place or is the upgrade out of place? So yeah, because of the underlying technology that we're dealing with, we talked about the Fusion uh, Middleware 12G update, um, it's out of place. So you cannot install these updates um, on top of an existing server with EPM on it. Okay, so it does require a new installation. You would have to provision new servers. You're gonna have to install with new OSs, 2016 Windows or uh, Linux, uh, any of those are supported, uh, but it does require new installation, right? And so basically you cannot, you cannot patch the tech stack with 11.2, you would have to go to new servers to do that, right? Uh, but you can use lifecycle management to migrate your objects. So most of your objects are gonna be easily migrated just by using the lifecycle management tool to export it from 11.124, and that is the supported version uh, to 11.2. Okay, and uh, the, final, um, the final question that was pre-registered, uh, describe the third-party compatibility with 11.2. Okay. Sure, absolutely. So uh, the big thing is, is Office 365 is gonna be supported both online and offline. So most people are using the offline version. Obviously you have Excel installed locally, you have SmartView installed locally. There's also the ability to run it online. So if you're a situation where you don't wanna have to install SmartView for every user that's out there, you can install it online with your Microsoft 365 account. And then when they, uh, based on the way you deploy it, uh, users that log in based on their credentials, they'll be able to see Excel online and SmartView comes online as well. So you don't have to have that installed locally anymore going forward if you don't want to. Okay. Uh, the big thing is the supported browsers. Uh, Windows Edge is now supported. Uh, Chrome is now supported as well as Firefox and Firefox has had, kind of been uh, all along. Um, but what you want to keep in mind is that Internet Explorer will not be supported. So if you're currently using Internet Explorer, I suggest you look at a, a different browser. It's not to say that it wouldn't work, that you couldn't get uh, features to work, but if you have any nuances and it doesn't come through very easily, they're going to tell you to upgrade. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Gary. Um, sure. So this is uh, the last slide that we have prepared based on the um, the questions that you all had submitted. At this point, we're going to do some Q&A. We have a few minutes remaining, so we have time for a couple of quick questions. And Gary, we did have a few that came in uh, during the um, uh, during the presentation. First sure. one, uh, are there any benefits to upgrading to 11.2 versus going to the cloud? Yeah, well, I, I think there's definitely some benefits uh, of staying on premise uh, as opposed to going to the cloud. Um, you know, if you already are on premise, um, you know, a lot of your automation is going to be able to retain. So for instance, if you have Maxell scripts where you're doing uh, backups or you're doing data loads, uh, metadata loads, all of that would still work in the 11.2 environment. If you were to go to the cloud, all of that would need to be converted to a um, uh, EPM automate script or some other type of batch scripting, but it would not, uh, you'd not be able to use Maxell going forward. Um, I know myself personally, I like using the uh, EAS console for S-Base. That's very helpful for me uh, when I'm dealing with on-premise applications. That does not exist in the cloud. It's not to say you, know, you can't work around that, but for those that are familiar with EAS, uh, EAS does not exist in the cloud. 
Um, same thing with HFM. HFM has an equivalent FCCS, but that would be a new implementation. There is no migration path to move um, HFM to FCCS where there is on-prem. You can just move that across and migrate a lot easier, a lot less risk. All right, thank you for detailing that out. Uh, this question just came through. How does the new RA frame impact my migration? Okay, so as we talked a little bit about before, you know, the reporting objects now stay in the database. They're no longer a file on the server. So what will happen when you migrate? You will use the old export import method to bring over your reporting objects uh, as opposed to using LCM. Uh, because there's no underlying file structure anymore for the reports, you would just use, uh, you go into the workspace, uh, explore your repository, and use the export objects and then import objects. And you probably would do that folder by folder to the extent it makes sense to, and then obviously you want to test that to make sure that's working. But that gets you up and up to date on the latest with regard to the way the repository is handled, and then going forward you should be fine to migrate between different versions of 11.2. Okay, good. Um, can I migrate workforce and or capital asset to 11.2? Uh, so the simple answer is yes. You can migrate any planning application that you have from 11.124 to 11.2. Uh, the difference that you'll notice, and this is something you'll want to check with your licensing, is that a lot of times when you're using workforce and capital asset planning, you have specific licenses for those. Those will not be required in the future because those modules do not exist, which means there will not be any additional support or new enhancements for those modules, but they will operate as they do currently in your 11.124 environment, just in an upgraded version. Okay. Um, here's another one for you, Gary. Uh, for S-Base, does partitioning still exist? You noted that it does not in planning. Um, so yes, S-based partitioning still does exist. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, uh, we've tested it with a couple of customers. Um, it seems to be working just fine. I don't think there's any uh, any there's been any forward statement from Oracle that they would be using Smart Push for S-based at this point. I think the partitioning will remain. Okay, and I think we have time for one more question. Um, if we did not get to your question, don't fear, we will reply to you one-on-one -on -one, uh, via email or conference call after the webinar. Uh, but the last question that just came through, how significant is the speed on the SmartView retrieve? Well, I think that's gonna vary. It just depends on your, uh, your retrieval, how big it is, what the formulas are, are you using ad hoc, uh, how, how much data are you dumping? Uh, it is improved. There are other ways that you can tune it to make it faster. Um, but I would say you're, you're, you're going to see an increase. It's just difficult to say without doing some testing on your application uh, specifically. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for taking 30 minutes uh, this afternoon. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you do have any follow-up questions, uh, Gary, you can advance to the next slide real quick. That'd be great. Uh, you'll see contact information that you can reach out to. If you know who your tier one sales rep is, you can reach out to that person directly. Um, otherwise, you will get a follow-up from us on any unanswered questions, as well as a uh, recording of today's session. Uh, thanks, everybody. Have a great day.